Support for KAOS provided by the Squaxin Island Museum's 13th Annual Water Sounds, live native art auction and traditional dinner, Saturday, September 21st, featuring woven, carved, and mixed-media pieces from Northwest native artists. Proceeds benefit the Squaxin Museum. Details at squaxinislandmuseum.org. the Puyallup Canoe family and that was Welcome Song and uh, before that I played Standing Strong Together with Puyallup uh, Canoe Family. New Beginning is the album and Upriser Records and we have Jewel James on the, the line and uh, I know that uh, I, I believe that you're on the road. Yes, uh, yes. We're just southeast of uh, Spokane now heading to Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Alright, so I wanted to uh, share a little bit more about uh, the journey that you're on with, with folks, and I'm excited that you're coming into Olympia and that I'm organizing at least some of the, my friends and family to come down and join that prayer with you and support you, and uh, uh, we're very appreciative of you doing what you're doing. Well, it's the uh, Native American Land Conservancy, working with uh, House of Tears Carvers, uh, House of Tears Carvers, uh, incorporated under the laws of elimination and we carved a totem pole that we're bringing down to um uh, powder river wyoming and we're going to start tracking the railroad trains backwards and doing some stops because we know the tribes in the northwest the five northwest states have all united under the affiliated tribes of northwest indians and they've all said no that they do not want this coal going through their territory, including their rivers, their streams, their creeks, and their circuit sites and places. And so we just hope to um, uh, work together with all those tribal leaders and their ceremonial people and make a few stops in uh, some of the cities and just call people of all races together because that's a big concern for all of us. You know, and um, of course, you know, uh, we know uh, coal is a big issue for people in the cities, the counties, and the states. And some are saying, well, you're going to get jobs out of it, but the jobs, the few jobs that it creates aren't worth the contamination it makes. And so 
We're heading over Coeur d'Alene tonight. That's where the affiliated tribes of Northwest Indians is meeting. And we're going to uh, talk to some of the leaders there and get their blessing. And then we're going to, um, uh, from there, after we're done, we're going to head to uh, uh, Powder River, Wyoming. And our first stop on September 17th in the evening is going to be at Northern Cheyenne for a evening blessing. And then we're going to have a morning blessing September 18th. Uh, then we leave for Missoula. And we'll have a, uh, on September 19th, we're going to have a ceremony up there, too. And then we leave for Spokane, and on September 20th, we'll be in Spokane at Haver Mail Park at the east end of Riverfront Park, Spokane. And from there, we're going to head to Celilo Falls Village. Are you still there? I'm, I'm listening. Okay. And so uh, from Celilo Falls, we're going to do a... Uh, we're going to do a little backtracking up to the Yakima Nation. The Yakima Nation asked us to come up, and they're going to uh, help you do some ceremony and some blessing. But I guess we're going to be at their Yakima Legends Casino, located at Fort Road there in Toppenish. And then we head out to Portland, and uh, we're hoping that some of the local tribes and the people there, uh, Indian country that's living inside Portland itself, as well as non-Indian country, will come out and help celebrate all of our efforts to uh, join together and to stop this coal from contaminating our beautiful Northwest. On September 25th, we'll be in Olympia at the Capitol building. And then uh, we go to Tacoma for a ceremony. Uh, we're told by the mayor of Seattle, we have to stop in Seattle. He said, uh, we can't go through Seattle without stopping. And so we're stopping in Seattle because I know the mayor of Seattle is pretty concerned. And our uh, tribal leader, Jay Julius, and the Lummi tribe have met with him a couple of times about this stuff. Uh, then we're going to be up at uh, Northwest Indian College on the Lummi Reservation on September 27th. And we're going to do some uh, ceremonies there with the students and the community. We're going to go up to Chayakin, which is Cherry Point, which is the place where they're proposing the uh, coal port. And uh, we're going to do a blessing of the pole and uh, bless the water. We're going to pray for the children of the earth, and we're going to smudge each other off and smudge the pole off, and we're going to head up to uh, northern Vancouver to Tlaiwatooth Nation up in North Van. The totem pole is a gift to them, and they're going to raise it September 28th in front of their tribal community building. And on the pole on the bottom, we have four salmon sim uh, swimming in symbolic water. We have two warriors kneeling down with a child, and the child looks a little hungry for role models and knowledge, and also for salmon and other food. That's why we kind of made it a hungry-looking child for teachings, uh, hungry for teachings. And just above that, we carved a drum symbol, a thunderbird drum with a drumstick. And above that is a wolf holding a large salmon, because uh, Saleh was two people are wolf people. They're the, a wolf nation, and they depend on the salmon out of the Fraser River. And they're really concerned about not only the coal port that's right there, but next to their reservation, but they're concerned about the tar sands, oil coming out, and being shipped out of their uh, Fraser River by things of Morgan. They know it's just a large, toxic cocktail, and they're afraid for the Salish Sea. And they have been reaching out to the tribes here in the lower 48 because we're all relatives and asking us to work with them. And so we heard them. We understand their concerns. And they're a small nation. And so we decided to give them this poll. And uh, we met with their elders up there. And uh, we, we agreed to what's going to be put on the poll. And uh, we have a, uh, a warrior song that's going to be given to them when we get up there. And... In the meanwhile, uh, we hope a lot of people will show up and support us. You know, we do have um, a site if people are interested in this campaign. They can go to www.totempolejourney.com. www.totempolejourney.com. And I guess there's a place called Indiegogo you can go to, too. Uh, <clears throat> you know, the, some of the people that are private citizens have gone online and help raise funds for us. Some organizations help raise funds for us so that we can cover our gas and meals as we go. And just This is the way it works. We just all work together and 
hope that our statements will be uh, unified, that we're all coming from the same direction, and that we're all concerned about taking action to preserve the beauty of our world. You know, I know all the tribes are concerned about their waters and their salmon habitat. They're all suffering because they don't get enough salmon as it is. You know, and uh, they've been shoved aside for over 100 years, shoved off the hunt- fishing grounds and out of the hunting grounds, and they have a lot of hungry children, and we can't afford to allow the earth to be destroyed anymore. Absolutely, and so when Jewel, when you come into Olympia, um, what can what can we expect from? Uh, I know from myself, uh, I, I've been telling everybody it's a prayer and show up uh, as a prayer yourself. And um, a native people uh, regalia, if you have regalia, wear your regalia. You uh, come up and and uh, join this prayer. So, um, if folks that haven't been to um, a ceremony like this, uh, what can they expect when uh, when you come to Olympia? How can we help you? Well, you know, there's uh, you know, most of the larger cities have some community leaders that we usually look forward, and we hope they come forward and help us co-coordinate. You know, we don't try to uh, do the whole show. It's not a show. We're trying to get people to come together and uh, just uh, work together, pray together, agree to uh, uh, try to accomplish. Uh, what's important in our lives, and in this case, uh, environmental protection. Uh, Normally, we'll come in and um, we'll sing some songs, uh, you know, to do some sharing, and then we'll talk, we'll give some speeches. And uh, if there's some community leaders, we hope that they'll come forward and share words with the public as well. You know, and uh, if there's some uh, community leaders that want to come forward and kind of sing a song, you know, uh, that'll help us because we're looking for blessings, too. You know, and uh, we have an elder um, out of Vancouver Island that works with some of our young people at Lummi. And he, he has a lot of relatives at Lummi. Tom Sampson comes down, and, you know, he told us, you know, he goes, you remember about the totem pole. It's not the totem pole that's sacred. It's the people that gather. When you bring people together in one place like that, it's the, who they represent, who they are coming together that makes it a sacred uh, event. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. and um, so yeah, I'm just uh, I'm like I said, I'm excited that you're coming into town, and I haven't seen you in a long time, so it it'd be good to to, to see you. And uh, I don't know if you remember uh, um, about six years ago when up in uh, Seattle, and uh, uh, I was next to Steve Robinson, and, and we were chatting a little bit about. Um, you know this this area because I'm a visitor myself, and I think it's important for folks to know um, what had happened here and uh, continue to share uh, with the folks. Um, you were talking about how we could walk on the backs of salmon and the, the berries. I know I shared this the last time we talked, but I think it's important for people to know that this place was uh, so bountiful, and we still have a lot here, and we need to take care of it. And I know that the other than um, you know the few jobs that it's going to create all the um and they want to go through an ancient burial ground and um these are things that uh, we need to know about well you know the cherry point is an ancient village and uh, we've always been concerned about it and we've been protecting it uh it does have um uh, uh herring grounds there and the herring you know we we haven't been fishing herring since 1979 and we've been trying to rebuild that population up. And the industries that are there are are impacting the spawning bed, the eel grass, and the survivability of the herring itself. And so we're really concerned. We have uh, cultural sites under the water. We have cultural sites up on the mainland and the beach. And there's bodies uh, scattered throughout the whole area. The state of Washington has said that this is one huge graveyard. You know, and uh, there's been studies after study after study done since the 50s, and everybody knows that, and we're just hoping that uh, everybody has the common idea that we all want to protect graves and cemeteries and sacred sites and sacred places. That's something that's important to all of us, you know, and so our elders have told us to uh, constantly try to protect these areas. They set the example, and we try to live by their words, and as time passes, we find ourselves becoming those elders. 
and carry on with the work that they had it down to a, you know, I was just in my 20s when they started training me to uh, uh, repatriate the bodies that were getting out of the universities. And since then, we have the Native American Graves Protection Repatriation Act, you know, and that's one of the things that we're really concerned about. You know, they tried to force a memorandum of agreement on the Lummi Nation, and you got to agree. The Army Corps of Engineers said last July, either you agree to this MOA or we will repatriate your, your ancestors' bodies. You know, and that's like holding them hostage. I was really upset, and I told them, you can't do that. The Native American Graves Protection Act gives us that right. You cannot interfere like that. I'm insulted by your insensitivity in thinking you can strong arm the Lummi Nation. But, uh, you know, the thing is, is that... Uh, we're not, uh, you know, our chairman just recently said that this impact cannot be mitigated. He was meeting with some post Salish nations, and he said it cannot be mitigated. We looked at it, and we cannot figure out how you can mitigate the damages that are going to be done to the crabs and the salmon and the herring and to the cultural sites and to the graves. It cannot be mitigated. We, are, we do not see any way that it can be. And I know recently the... Um, uh, press came out with a statement saying that Lummi was once very strong on no, and now they kind of backed off. And uh, I think people are trying to read into our letters that we're being soft, but I know our people and our council said no. You know, and I think that that's important to all the tribes to understand that we're with them because all the other tribes said no already. But they're being respectful to the Lummi Nation because it's in our backyard. And so sacred sites and places are important to all of us. Yeah, they're just being trampled on all over the country. You know, and I always say that, well, you know, corporations have rights, but it's really privileges they have because this country is founded upon the idea of we the people. We the people, not we the corporations. You know, but a lot of times we're just kind of shoved aside because we're just people. We're just common people. And we don't have the same financial power and can't always uh, get the attention we need to stop these type of projects. And as a consequence, we end up living in their waste. We have a corporation that was up in Bellingham there, and they left a super site, a mercury. Mercury is so thick in Bellingham Bay that they got away with it. They just walked away free and clear. You know, and uh, we don't want these super sites in our backyard. Nobody does. You know, and the corporations that are like Goldman Sachs, Goldman Sachs is, uh, you know, the stock owners there are investing in this place. You know, and the thing about that is that Australia is going to sell coal to China and India a lot cheaper. And there's no market in coal uh, for them to be shipping out of the West Coast here. It's a fool's dream. You know, and uh, once Australia enters the game, this uh, port's no longer needed because they're not going to be able to compete. But well, you know what, uh, there's other ideas out there, and we understand our Crow Nation relatives. And, you know, we heard that there's corporations that, that they can go to the right to Crow Nation and build a liquid-fired natural gas plant and turn the coal into natural gas like a big pressure cooker. And they would buy 100 million tons a year and keep it right there, you know. I mean, that makes those jobs stay at home, you know. So there's other things that we could be doing and we should be looking at. You know, uh, tribes need to support each other. We need to understand Crow Nation. I mean, that's all they got. We got to figure out a way to work with them. You know, so in the meanwhile, we also have to protect the rivers and the streams and try to work with all the cities, the counties, and state and federal officials that are sensitive to the public's voice. I know um, the Army Corps of Engineers kind of brushed us off, saying they're not going to do a regional impact statement. You know, but I know Washington State is saying, oh, no, we're going to look at it in detail. We're going to do it in depth. We're going to look at it all. So thank God for that. Wow. But we need the public to comment. Absolutely. And um, it's important for us all to, to gather and to stop the poisons from being put into the water because it's causing the cancers and the, a lot of the deaths. I remember speaking to an elder um about five years ago and he told me that uh and it, if we keep the way we're going we're going to see the um hospital beds increase with the amount of people dying of uh poisoned water well the people that are right along the uh, next door to these uh coal piles and next door to the um train tracks where the dust is blowing 
It's going to cause cancer. It's going to cause asthma. You know, and uh, you know when you get into those areas where people are exposed to a lot of coal dust, you'll see the cancer rates and asthma asthma rates uh, just increase rapidly. People start dying off. You know, and so that's part of the, uh, the heartache I think of those communities is that nobody goes back and sees what happens to them. You know, once the industry takes over, that's it. It's kind of a blanket. No, the media doesn't go there anymore. And the people just die. You know, and so we don't want that for anybody. You know, nobody nobody loves cancer. Nobody wants to suffer. Nobody wants to see their children die like that. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. And it's time for us all to put a stop to this. And, uh, again, you're coming into Olympia on the 24th. That's a Tuesday from noon to one. I hope people uh, come out. I'm, I know that I'll be there. And uh, if we could, uh, you know, I want to just uh, let you know the air, airwaves uh, are yours when you need them. If you need to call and, and share on, on your journey, uh, I would uh, love that. Love to know what's going on and uh, what we can we can continue to do um, to support this uh, prayer that's coming through uh, our our little village here in Olympia, the Squally Ops area, the Squatson, uh, Chehalis, uh, um, Duwamish, all those folks that that dwell that dwelled here and still dwell here um, in this land. Um, we need to to be there. Well, we appreciate that, and uh, we will, we are putting stuff on Facebook. Yeah, you know, a little here, a little there. We're looking forward to the media to participating and uh, uh, representatives working with us. And again, uh, anybody that's interested in uh, picking up more information about the journey, www.totempolejourney.com. All right. W- One more time, www.totempolejourney.com, all lowercase. Check it out. All right. So, again, I appreciate you taking time, and, uh, yeah, so thanks. All right. Thanks a lot. All right. Take, Take care. You too. Bye. Bye-bye. And uh, that was Jewel James, Lummi Nation. And, again, uh, he will um, and his crew will be coming through Olympia on its way up to um, Lummi and beyond and uh, bring that prayer in. And uh, I love what he said about it. it's the people that bring the prayer. And so I hope to see many folks out when it comes into Olympia down by the fountain, I believe, that uh, it will be there. And, um from noon to one on the 24th that's tuesday and uh again this is chaos radio 89.3 fm